Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back another video from Annie News, and today we're checking out ReZero Season 2 full recap. Everything we need to know for Season 3, which is mad because as of yesterday, Episode 1 of Season 3 has gone up onto Crunchyroll. I was about to watch it, and I was like, no, 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 no. I'm sure Annie News is going to drop his um, recap video soon. And lo and behold, here we are. So, let's get a recap of Season 2, which was so good. I loved Season 2. Uh, for everything that we specifically should need to remember going in to Season 3. Where Season 1 set the stage and developed Subaru through immense suffering, mm. Season 2 confronts the past while also developing Subaru through immense suffering. This time it's not just him going through it though, as Amelia and the others all get their fair share of the spotlight. So if you're looking for a refresher just like how I did with Season 1, well, here's everything that happened in Season 2. Sweet. Let's get started. All right. The story picks up immediately after the fight with the White Whale. Which I thought was boss. It's like, all right, cool, go straight into it. the unfortunate fate of both Rem and Krush. They were confronted by Greed and Gluttony, two Sin Archbishops who will be taking center stage in Season 3. Right, okay. Krush got off easy by only having her memories taken, while Rem's existence was completely erased. Whatever Lai did, he completely removed Rem from everyone's memory. And what was... <laughs> just to take away from the seriousness was, um... When Giguk did his uh, re-zero in minutes video and it ended with him saying, who's Rem? And then season two <laughs> starts with everyone being like, who's Rem? <laughs> everyone, of course, except for Subaru. Such news was more than Subaru could handle, though, so in an attempt to go back and do things over, he tried to save Rem the only way he knew how. Unfortunately, his checkpoint had already updated, leaving Rem comatose pretty much indefinitely. Mm. So, if Subaru wanted to save her now, then the only way to do so was to defeat Gluttony, one of the key motivations currently driving him forward. The next day, Subaru returns back to the mansion, only to find now he has to go to Sanctuary. Reason being that neither oh, yeah, Roswell the nor the yeah. villagers have returned from it. They can't get out, can it they? leads Subaru and Amelia to embark there themselves, thrusting them into a new adventure to save the villagers. Yeah, I'm trying to remember this. This is because a barrier surrounds Sanctuary trapping mixed bloods inside, and the only way to remove it is to overcome Sanctuary's trials. So, the moment Amelia stepped one foot into Sanctuary, she too became trapped until those trials were completed. Mm -hmm. Now, Sanctuary wasn't Garfield. very much of a sanctuary at all, since in actuality, it's the witch's graveyard. It's the permanent resting place for the Witch of Greed, Echidna. Her tomb is where the trials of Sanctuary are held, and aside from Subaru, only mixed bloods have permission to try them. So Amelia sets out to do just that, but after something goes wrong, Subaru rushes in and gets to try the first trial himself. Here we're shown the life Subaru. Oh, mate, I'm behind, oh this the season was so good. Disappearing on his parents and the overall pain of never getting to say goodbye to them. Mm. It all leads to Subaru understanding more of his insecurities, while at the same time helps him gain closure over the emotional scars of his past. It definitely wasn't easy to do, but the encouragement from his parents dissuaded his doubt and filled him with confidence. It helped him realize he's loved for who he is rather than what he does, mm. leaving him with a renewed sense of purpose at the end of it. Amelia's first trial didn't go nearly as well, though, as her failure to complete it left her emotionally broken, a state we soon find out Roswell wants for her since everything such up a until sneaky now sneak. were all things he let happen. He let the witch cult attack and hid information from Amelia because he had faith Subaru would succeed in his stead. It's the first hint that Roswell knows Subaru can return by death, and it sets the stage for the schemes to come after. Yeah, Roswell, man, he's, he's a sneaky little sneak sneak. Ugh. It's after that that Go Subaru out. returns to the mansion with some of the villagers, only to be killed by a certain bowel hunter. That in turn leads him to rush back faster in the next loop, but such additional effort proved futile since the outcome was the same. Now, isn't the reason they're able to leave, though, because Garfield's got that necklace, isn't that something that lets them out. I'm trying to remember there was a reason why they could leave, because the trials haven't been completed yet, have they? Really? I mean, Elsa by herself is certainly one thing, but the addition of a deadly mob is Mate, this was so sick. Harder. Fortunately, Subaru does barely escape. As soon as she popped back in, it was library, like, oh my god. The reveal of her compliance to the gospel makes her unwilling to help. We're shown that Beatrice only does what the gospel tells her to do. Subaru's then killed once again by Elsa, 
returns by death back to the tomb, then meets with Garfield and Ryusu where a bunch of exposition is given. As it turns out, the barrier only affects those who are pure half-breeds. So if Garfield wanted to leave Sanctuary, he fully could given he's only a quarter beast human. Super right, okay, so I was thinking, yeah, there's a reason. To let him take the trial in Amelia's place, but this just results in Subaru getting kidnapped. You see, in addition to Garfield's massive distrust towards outsiders, Subaru's overwhelming scent of the witch just reinforced that. Enter Otto and Ram as his unlikely saviors, and that brings us to a showdown between all four of them. Unfortunately, this too was a futile effort on their part, as Garfield's tiger form was way too strong. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> so Subaru once again barely survives, only to meet yet another oh, no. person death. No. This time the most grisly in the entire series. As this is horrible. What a way to go out. This is oh no, no. As a pack of flesh-hungry rabbits eat him alive. It's this, combined with the recurring sight of seeing those he cares for die, that causes Subaru's frustration and despair to finally overwhelm him. They were emotions powerful enough to earn him the qualifications to re-enter the witch's tea party. A pivotal moment allowing Subaru to finally reveal return by death to someone. The two then discuss his powers, the great rabbit, and how to approach his current predicament, ultimately leading to these conversations with the other witches. Mm. It was by the time that Subaru was done, though, that Satella's shadow had manifested outside and destroyed everything. Garfield and the Ryusu clones would try to hold her off, but even they weren't enough to stop Satella from getting to Subaru. It had left Subaru with no choice but to restart, but not before first seeing what Satella looks like. This shakes Subaru down to his core, leaving him an emotional mess right in front of Amelia. An interaction that was actually quite beneficial to her character, since what was a moment of weakness for Subaru actually went to strengthen her. Subaru's then brought into the loop about the whole Ryuzu Akidana situation, which was basically a massive experiment to gain immortality. It's after that Amelia opens up about her anxiety, giving Subaru the opportunity to support her emotionally. Subaru then leaves for the mansion a third time, confronts Beatrice over her submission to the gospel, then finally discovers the truth about what she'd been doing here. She'd been waiting 400 years for a single person bound by a magical contract forcing her to stay until they got here. That person was never actually going to arrive though, so Subaru begged for Beatrice to join him. The thing is, whether out of emotional conflict or a belief that she was undeserving of it, this so-called companionship wasn't something she was ready to accept from anyone. Mm. This showed Subaru he wasn't yet at the point where he could save Beatrice, leading to another failed loop, this time oh. far worse than all the others. Amelia's psyche had been shattered after being pushed over the edge, Beatrice killed at the hands of Elsa, Ram and Garfield murdered by Roswell, then the Great Rabbit closing in fast. Right before they do though, it's here Roswell reveals that this was all part of his plan. Everything that's been happening, he's been doing to manipulate Subaru. He's assumed Subaru could restart from the very beginning, and has been using that to his advantage to achieve his goals. So, one creepy kiss later, and another restart, leads Subaru to beckon for Echidna again. This time he's shown the unthinkable present, each representing a timeline where things were different. A Rem-disguised witch then awaits him at the end of it, saving him from what would have been irrevocable mental deterioration. Echidna then tries to offer Subaru a contract, but not before first being warned by all the other witches. Yo, they all pop in like, mm -mm, you need to think about this. <laughs> in the end, Subaru decides to decline it, since the contract with her would lead everywhere but the optimal path. That's when Satella invades Echidna's dreamscape to give her own opinion too, revealing that all she wants is for Subaru to save himself as well. It's a big point of contention between all the witches, since on one side you have those who support Subaru's decision to ignore Satella, yeah. while on the other there's <laughs> those who want him to accept her. In the end, the side wanting him to accept her win out, forcing him to realize he too has the right to live as well. It's an important turning point for Subaru's character, since it has him see return by death isn't this crutch for him to stand on. It's not this common card he should be playing whenever he wants to. This all helps him to understand himself and Satella. Yeah, because we see the timelines and how it affects people after he's dead. We never see that it's like something to think about. Like the people within that timeline, him killing himself or dying or anything like that. It's like 
it affects them within you know our mate seeing all that was like a mind mess as well like. enough to realize that she might not be the villain that he thought she was in any case it's after that subaru awakens to find he's been stripped of his privileges to enter the tomb he then visits roswell to inquire about other options bringing us to the reveal that the mansion assassins were his idea yeah, he sent it was all like, solely what? to strengthen Subaru's resolve, since by having him choose between Amelia or those mm. at the mansion, <laughs> it forces him to make a sacrifice he can't take back. This is, once again, all to perfect Subaru and turn him into a tool that Roswell can use for his own goals. Obviously, this was quite the shock to Subaru, but after a bit of help from Otto and a newfound resolve to fight back, Subaru decides to confront Roswell head-on. He creates a bet where if he can save both the mansion and Sanctuary, then Roswell will have to support Amelia in full. This forces Subaru onto a path where he needs to save everyone, starting of course with those closest to him. So first he helps Amelia get her resolve back, beats Scarfield with the help of his new sloth witch factor power, then recruits him to their side to fight against Elsa. In the meantime, Amelia starts the trial of her past. Let's go, team! The Everyone in places! Of her time in the Elior oh, mate. Yeah. They give shape to all her insecurities, as well as provide context to those deeply rooted feelings of inadequacy she has. She is able to overcome these on her own, though, building Amelia up as someone who's not afraid anymore. She isn't haunted by the mistakes made in her past, nor is she scared of the life that she could have had. She doesn't even flinch at the sight of what her future may bear, since at this point she's no longer afraid of her own potential. No. Instead, she's able to face each trial with confidence, and by the end is more than determined to forge her own path. This allows her to complete the trials and dispel the barrier, subverting every expectation that Roswell had for her. Now, it's between all this that Roswell's obsession is finally made clear, revealing his whole motivation to revive Echidna. Ew. That's the ultimate goal he's pursuing, and in order to achieve it, he'll sacrifice anyone. anyone yeah. This makes him become more proactive in bringing about Subaru's downfall, but Ram and Puck intervene to stop him. Meanwhile, Garfield, Otto, and Subaru head back to the mansion, settling once and for all the score with Elsa. Garfield takes her on in a 1v1 while Subaru saves Beatrice from her self-imposed isolation. He doesn't deny that he's not that person, but what he offers in exchange is the true companionship Beatrice so very desires. It's the first step towards this profound emotional connection between them since for once someone wants Beatrice to live for herself. Initially, Beatrice doesn't want any of it, but after a lot of persistence and a bit of self-reflection, Eventually, she accepts the hand Subaru's holding out to her, finally freeing her from the 400-year contract confining her. This was the final piece to the puzzle of Season 2, since by gaining Beatrice's trust and unlocking her power, Subaru could go back to Sanctuary and save everyone. Let's go! With Garfield's help, he was able to overcome the conflict at the mansion, and with Beatrice's, he was able to do the same at Sanctuary thus beating Roswell in the game he himself created and winning the bet he started against him. This places him on Amelia's side for good and finally establishes the Amelia camp as one cohesive unit. Boom. So in the end, Amelia is a lot more capable than when she started, Subaru no longer relies on return by death for everything, and the threat of the archbishops are made loud and clear. It's this along with the royal selection that sets up nicely the events for season 3. It'll be good to see a Subaru who's a lot more capable of leadership, isn't there a year and isn't Amelia a year? who's far more confident in her Season abilities. 3 is like a year after. Garfield's past is something that'll come to the forefront too, so it'll cool. be good to understand cool. the feelings that he has towards his mother. In short, they were initially resentment because he thought she abandoned him, but mm. after doing the trial himself, he became a lot more understanding. That's pretty much all the things worth highlighting, so that's everything about Season 2 for you. Now, if you liked the video, then leave a like, and if you want to see Season 3 content, then be sure to subscribe. Hell yeah. I'll be doing weekly videos talking about what the anime missed from the novels, Sick. as well as streams on Sunday talking about the episodes live. Alright! Until then, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, so until next time. time. Ciao. Ciao. Trey cool, trey cool. Love that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, nice little recappy cap there. I forgot little bits. So seeing that, it's like definitely, definitely worth doing. And as we're watching ReZero, we will check out the ReZero Cook content videos. I'm sure he said he was going to do a Dan Manchi recap as well.
or maybe not, I'm not sure. But anyway, thank you to my patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video, I want to be able to watch patron-only reactions, such as the original Dragon Ball series. Link in the description to the Patreon page. $1 a month is all that helps support the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you for that. Thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? If you guys, think of this. Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch. Go to future videos. See you guys all you guys next time.